Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2006 Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works. Up front is a 1.6 liter supercharged inline four and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Mini Cooper S for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that this is a John Cooper work, something I haven't dealt with before. So I am so excited to dive into that with you guys today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, zachpradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your your car just like this one and you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel but let's get back to the John Cooper works what does this car mean what is John who is John why is John well let's dive into it John Cooper was the most important person to happen to many Coopers not only did they derive the name from him but he also entered the Mini Cooper back in the 60s into a bunch of races and won and made the car very, very popular. It was one of the first times that a small people's car was also touted as a fun, sporty automobile. And I've driven a late 80s, and I'll leave that video at the end if you're curious about a little bit more history of the vehicle. But what does the actual John Cooper works get? What makes this particular Mini Cooper S so special? Well, from the factory, the John Cooper Works gets a machine cylinder head with larger exhaust ports, an 11% supercharger reduction pulley and belt, one-step colder spark plugs, catback exhaust, air intake with a flapper that opens at 3,800 RPM, an ECU remapping, larger 380 cc injectors versus the stock 330 cc, a limited slip differential, larger front brakes with JCW calipers, and some other options available were suspension, an aero kit, extra braces, and carbon fiber parts, but this particular car doesn't have that, so we won't touch on it too much. So all of that engine work increased the car from about 168 horsepower to 210 horsepower, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's talk about the engine. Let's talk about the driving experience here in the John Cooper Works Mini. Well, the engine and drivetrain is fantastic. I really, really love it. Now, like I said, the John Cooper Works gets an 11% reduction in the pulley size. Well, the owner has gone ahead and pushed that to 17 percent so yeah it's fun and it whines <laughs> this car has more wine than a suburban mom on a monday afternoon <laughs> i love it for that i love supercharger wines they are my favorite thing in the whole wide world and this car most certainly has it but it's a very, very punchy 210 horsepower. You have to remember, there weren't many cars in this era making that much power. I mean, the Civic Si wasn't even touching the twos, but the Mini Cooper was, and I absolutely love that for it. Now, like I said, paired to its six-speed manual transmission, I'm not overly in love with it. It's a little stiff. The clutch is a little stiff. The shifter's a little stiff, and that could be this particular vehicle, but as time goes on, Mini Cooper shifters, in my mind, have gotten worse and worse and worse. This is still manageable, and I'm still having fun with it. It's still a good time, but I do think that the early 2000s, like the 2003s, just had a little bit better of a shifter. But what can you do? Last but not least, of course, the Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works is front-wheel drive. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. We do have some very interesting bits in here. Well, in front of me, I have a single tachometer because we'll talk about the speedometer in a second. However, the speedometer would be found here if the vehicle did have factory navigation, of which this one does not. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my volume skip track, phone options, and on the right, I have my cruise control options. Very, very small, little dainty buttons, but they do the job pretty good. And I like that a lot. So something interesting I wanted to add that the owner, Dan, pointed out to me that I never knew is that this key has a battery in it. It's a little, uh, you know, plus, you know, hit it, whatever. But how do you change the battery? How do you change it? Well, you don't. The actual ignition has a charging system in it. So it charges your key when you put it in so you never have to change the batteries. That's pretty cool. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, and on the door, I have my latch to get in and out, and that's pretty much it. 
pretty bare bones interior, at least on this side of the pond. Moving into the center, this is where you get your giant speedometer. Now this is very, very typical of Mini Cooper to put a giant speedometer right in the center. And I love it. It also has the odometer incorporated into it and it's pretty cool. Off to the left and right of that giant gauge, I do have some climate control vents, which are very, very nice. And then down below, I do have my radio, nothing really to report here, AM, FM, as well as CD. And then I have the climate controls. The climate controls are a little bit cluttered, not the biggest fan of them. However, they do function pretty well. I don't get dual zone or anything like that. But then what I do love is I get these awesome little toggle switches down below. Really, really big fan of these guys. They are for my windows left and right, my traction control, my lock and unlock, fog lights, front and rear, and then windows for the passenger. I love that about these. I love the feeling of them. They feel like old analog audio boards. I remember my dad used to have like Casio keyboards and such, and they had switches and dials like this. I love that feeling. But off to the right of all of that stuff, I do have a cup holder, a factory cup holder. And so we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 2006 Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works. And I am over the moon to report that it passes with a factory cup holder in the Mini Cooper, it passes the big friggin' bottle test. This has to be the smallest car to ever pass the big friggin' bottle test. I am so excited, and I can finally tout this car as a win. <laughs> Moving down below all of that stuff, I have two more cup holders. These fail, but I don't care. I'm already happy. And I have a cigarette lighter in between the two. And then we get the shifter. The shifter is very, very plasticky, and it is very tall. And like I said, I'm not in love with the feeling of it. However, I think it looks presentable, and that's all I really ask for from a car like this. Then I do have more buttons for my heated seats, as well as my mirror adjustments, parking brake, and then the seats themselves are finished in this very nondescript leather. It's very smooth, very smooth. I got them smooth seats. However, they are comfortable and the heating element really works today on this nice fall afternoon, which I am happy, which I am very happy about. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, can't imagine this is gonna be fun. You put your right foot in the mini, you put your left foot out, you gotta go my good. All right, so we're mostly in the back of the Mini Cooper S. John Cooper works as I adjust the camera, and uh, it's not great. For little kids, works perfect. Put a car seat back here. It's what the owner Dan does. Do that. Don't uh, don't put your big homies back here because big homies don't fitties. I don't get really any amenities back here. I have like these little pockets for like storage, um, but that's pretty much it. Let's hop around the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks with the British Racing Green. All right, so we're on the back of the Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works, and we do have a little trunk popper here so we'll pop it there and as you can see very small trunk uh i don't think that was really any secret uh that it is a very small trunk i get a little s badge here which is pretty freaking sweet i get a little light and of course these rear seats do go down so if you are planning a trip with you and one other person you can put these bad boys down and you do get this nice cargo cover look at how tiny and cute it is love that something i do want to note however is that you could actually see the paint line for the roof Kind of interesting. Anyway, that's the rear hatch of the Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works. I think it's pretty neat. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And I love this car because it is finished in British racing green. One of the best factory colors to ever hit any car maker ever. And I really, really appreciate that. I love the white stripes and the white roof. It's very, very Mini Cooper. There's no two ways about it. And I love cars that stick out in a crowd. Just on a flat piece of paper, you can identify this as a Mini Cooper. That is some brand recognition, and that's what I've always loved. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a John Cooper Works Mini Cooper? Well, this experience has been pretty top notch. It's been a very, very good, very fun car to drive. No, I'm not in love with the shifter. I'm not in love with some of the plastics in here and whatnot, but you forget about all of that stuff when you just 
hear that supercharger whine. That is all you need to hear, and I love that about this car. It's so much fun to drive. And honestly, I think these cars are kind of overlooked, at least today in modern standards. Yes, they do have some issues reliability-wise, but as the owner, Dan, was telling me, expect to spend about a grand when you get it in just preventative maintenance with the supercharger and other things like that. But once you get through that, he said that these have been incredibly reliable. He's owned several Mini Coopers, and they've been really reliable in his ownership time which gives me great faith. I've always been a little nervous about the Mini Cooper. Yeah, they've always been fun to drive. I don't think there's a Mini product I've driven that was that terrible. And so they've always been super fun to drive, super fun to rev out. They make good noises. They handle really well. And I also think that the John Cooper Works has a very, very good packaging to it. it gets that extra exhaust. It gets a limited slip differential. It gets the tune. It gets a little bit different engine. I think overall, it's a really, really solid package that gets overlooked a lot. When I tell people, oh, what are some sporty cars that are decently affordable? This car tends to slip my mind. And that's shame on me. Shame on me for letting this car slip my mind, this great, fantastic car. I really, really love it. Like I said, I don't often think about Mini Cooper. When I'm behind the wheel, I obsess over them. They're really, really fun. And this is just another notch on Mini Cooper's bedpost. It really, really is. And it's fantastic. Huge thank you to the owner, Dan, for letting me take out his British Racing Green, John Cooper Works Mini Cooper S. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. Dan has been great. I reached out to him last minute, and I'm so glad that we were able to actually set this video up. Huge thank you to him. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.